Geekscapists, look who I've got right here, our good friend Jeff Fahey. Um, so Jeff is in this brand new movie. It's called Man Eater, and it's actually out now in theaters and on demand. And uh, I think we've been talking giant shark movies on the show before, and uh, this is definitely a giant shark movie. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, you're in a giant shark movie. I mean, yes. have you done a yeah. giant shark movie before? No, I haven't. Um, but uh, and this is a giant shark movie, and I haven't seen the shark yet. Oh, there it is! Holy moly! <laughs> Oh, that I, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Don't be expecting Jaws on this one, Geekscapist, but also don't be expecting Sharknado. This is a this is still a shark that stays in the water. Yeah. But this thing is ridiculously big, and I, I'm just going to go ahead and spoil it for you, Geekscapist. If you uh, if you expect the kind of shark movie that they have in Jaws, where it's like, oh, the mystery is in not seeing the shark. No, that's not what you're going to get with Maneater. You're going <laughs> to see the shark. You're gonna this see is a different roller coaster ride. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're you're gonna see the yeah. shark eat a lot of people in hilarious, <laughs> creative ways. So it's a bit of a roller coaster. Um, Jeff, how'd you become a part of this movie? Uh, through my friends, the uh, producer Damon Hillen. Uh, we're old friends, and also the writer, uh, writer director uh, Justin Lee and um, Trace Atkins. So um, they were the film was already in progress, and and they asked me if I'd jump in for a day. And play this character and so uh i had time in between two films uh a week there and uh they said we're shooting hawaii and um i said i'm in yeah, uh, and the reason is it's is we all know it is a miracle that any movie ever gets made whatever the size whether it's 80 million dollars or a half a million dollars whether they've got 12 weeks on the schedule or uh 10 days but um so I'm always willing to help out friends and be part of part of something. And even in, on s many small films that I've done uh, with people that I didn't know going in. But um, yeah, and, and jumping around in the different genres. So this Maneater, yes, I have not seen that uh, the giant shark yet. Um, they're sending me a copy of the film today that I'm going to see. But I understand that it's a it's an interesting little roller coaster ride. It's a it's a sit back, drink a beer, eat some popcorn, and enjoy it for a couple hours, and then head out of town. Yeah, yeah. I was watching it and thinking, hey, why isn't my brother watching this thing with me? Why, <laughs> yeah. why, why aren't we just yelling at the screen at this point? <laughs> exactly. And, I mean, Jeff's got it right, Geekscapist. If you want uh, kind of like a gauntlet movie, we call them gauntlet movies because you you get like two or three of these things. You just run the gauntlet with them and have a have a fun time with your friends. Yeah, you gotta have an yeah. action movie, maybe a sci fi movie, maybe a uh, you know, a kung fu movie, and you just yeah. have a good time and yell at the screen and yeah. tell the actors to stop being so dumb and do something else. Exactly, you know, and that's exactly what it is. It's not, uh, you know, it's it's not going to change your life, and and uh, it's not going to get nominated. It's it's a it's a roller coaster ride. It's it's pure entertainment, and and uh, as you can see, I mean, critics, film critics, God bless them, they can have their opinions of of this and and uh, other films, but filmmakers are out there, you know, you know how many people started at Corman, you know that whole story, oh, yeah. and they just progress and work, but they've got to hone their craft, and many filmmakers that I've worked over the years started doing films like this, and that's exactly what Justin Lee has been doing, you know, we did two other westerns, uh, a film called Badland, and um, um, Apache Junction and each each time Justin does a film he's honing his writing his his in the different genres and uh and his filmmaking and some hit some miss but god bless the cats who just get out there and, and just keep growing and trying yeah he actually has a movie coming up with a friend of ours Casper Van Deen's in his most dangerous game adaptation Casper's a dear friend I love Casper oh wait Casper's yeah. gonna be at my wedding next month <laughs> oh my God! Please tell my head hello. Yeah, I will, Jeff. Um, yeah. Well, let's talk some westerns. I've got the geeks game. Yeah. We're pretty excited about you coming on the show. So I was like, "Hey, who wants to know what?" And they all yeah. uh, got pretty excited about you coming on the show. Especially my friend Andy, who Silverado's is easily his favorite western. Uh, uh, that was earlier in your career. Like, what'd you take from that? Because I know you worked with Lawrence Kasdan again on Wyatt Earp. That that set the pace for a lot of things and uh, first of all it was such a great group of people and we were down there we were in we were in santa fe 
I think starting in early November, uh, late October, early November of 83, I believe. And we were there until late January, early February. So we were there a long time and it was a huge cast. And as far as I know, everyone got along. I mean, it was great. And, and, and every department, uh, and we were working six day weeks, big, big schedule, big shoot, a uh, lot of hours for a, a lot of people, the crew, not for all of us actors, but the principal actors uh, certainly had a, a heavier lift. But um, in different departments would have parties on, on Saturday night. And, <laughs> and, and Brian Dennehy, I, Dennehy and I, who I remain good friends right to the end, Brian was beautiful. Uh, we had the bad guys party, uh, and uh, which Brian threw at the big condo where he was staying. And don't forget the the it, it was a snowstorm that night, and we we had hired the 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 minivans to haul the cast and crew up the hill from t- uh, the hotels and so on. What I'm getting at is that there were so many gatherings like that that each department had in it. And for my observation, I noticed that when anybody ever had any problems during the week, they were worked out at those parties on the weekend. Um, but it, to your to your question, Jonathan, I'll never forget when Larry said to me, Larry Kasdan near the end of the film, um, and it was at one of those gatherings. And uh, by this time, after the months and months of everyone working together, everybody w- was great friends. And I was sitting there uh, having a beer with Larry, and he said, uh, it was really great to have you here. And I said, Larry, I loved it. I just was beautiful. And I said, you know, it's my first big film. And and he said, um, I'm paraphrasing here, but I'll never forget. He said something to the effect of uh, cherish this or hold on to it because they're not all like this. I mean, he did, it, I, I'm quoting when he said they're not all like this and meaning that they're not all like a family like this. And so I did hold on to that and still do. And th- this is how many years later and, and 200 and some films later that I, I always tried to bring that part, what little I uh, and what great amount I had learned on that film, working process, observing uh, 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 watching these actors work and then just grow along the way. Um, so there was a lot that, that, uh, that I took away from that, Jonathan. I was very fortunate for that film to be um, my first big studio film, although I had done theater and, and, and television before that, but first big on the set, you know, on location. I learned yeah. so much on that and still to How this did day it, practice it. When you come back and do Wyatt Earp, how did you see uh, um, Lawrence progress, yourself progress? And then obviously, like... It, well, uh, I certainly progressed. But yeah, I saw Kevin was a, you know, this was, what was this now, was eight now, years yeah. later? Yeah. I mean, he was a huge world star then and, and uh, uh, by that time. And um, it was beautiful. And I was so uh, appreciative that they, they included me in that that great, beautiful, uh, another Western. Um and by that time, of course, I had grown also. So that would be, I don't know, in those 10 years, it, it would have been probably 35 films under my belt by that point. I'm not sure how many, but uh, we were all we were all uh, better, uh, more comfortable at our crafts uh, and our our styles and our rhythms. And again, that was another big, wonderful experience. Um, it, I got to tell you, Jonathan, I've been, bl- I've been blessed, really, because uh, I, I mean, I'm going to be 70 in a couple months and I've been in the industry for, I don't know, 45 years or so. And I feel like I'm just starting. I mean, I really do. And and, uh, and to this and another part of the answer to your earlier question, what did I take away from Silverado? I'm still taking away great things from walking away from each project. Uh you know, it's kind of like a musician, you know, you, you're just getting that jazz a little better, you know, and, and it's just, it becomes more comfortable getting more done in a shorter period of time, uh, being able to, to uh, invest even more emotionally and, and creatively and physically uh, without putting as much into it. 
you know, it's, it's, uh, and, and being able to observe people in a different way and get more out of not just those great, wonderfully, uh, um, proven talents who've got these great careers, but with these, these young filmmakers and being on, that's why, um, you know, going into a film like Maneater, I mean, I go into that just as I would go into, uh, uh, into a, a Robert Rodriguez film, uh, an $80 million film with Robert and, and Van Affleck and, you know, and, and, and people like that. Because we still bring whatever we have and, and deliver the jazz, uh, regardless of the, the, the budget or the time that we have. But we do learn one, uh, hopefully learns what I have uh, learned is that I can do as much, if not more, in less amount of time and chill and observe much more yeah work smarter not harder um yeah, exactly. so, yeah. i love those robert rodriguez things i thought I, I thought alita was i thought it turned out great and it should have gotten a sequel and then obviously planet terror is just a hell of a lot of fun yeah. so those collaborations are some of my favorites yeah. the geekscape yeah. is love some of those kind of tone movies too lon strickland says please tell him that he elevated dark man 3 significantly (laughs) people love body parts my friend cooper barnes loves body parts uh Mm. body body parts is a hell of a lot of fun uh but i think the first time i saw you was the lawnmower man and Uh, yes that movie when you think about it now um it still has like a special place in my heart and also one of our uh, listeners, Faye Rains, uh, she says, um, looking at like VR, uh, what do you think compared to like now that we've actually living with VR? That was 92. Well, Are you impressed by it? Scared by it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated that when we did that movie, I mean, we were, we had goggles on with cardboard and, you know, right. I mean, we weren't looking at anything and we didn't see any of the special effects until we saw the movie. Uh, so uh, Pierce and myself and the others were reacting to nothing. Um, I mean, it was even before the big green screen and all of that. So uh, and now to see where where virtual reality is and where special effects and where everything is uh, in, in, in the real world and in the um, filmmaking world. It's incredible. What what was a long, uh, long arm man was what was 92. that eighty nine? Oh, I mean, was you it? you might have shot it in ninety ninety one or or so. Yeah, but, I think yeah. it was thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it just look where we've come in these thirty years. It's incredible. Uh, so yeah, I'm blown away. And and knowing if, if we've gone from nothing to where we are now, imagine where we'll be thirty years from now. It's I mean, it's just incredible. I was inside um, um, a 3D virtual reality thing, and I thought it, it can be used for so many things, not just entertainment, but uh, education in so many different ways. I mean, it's fascinating. I, I know I'm not really specifically answering your question, Jonathan, no, but I, I am blown away by the progress and, and wh- where it's gone. Because when we were doing that film, I, I, not in my wildest dreams would I, I imagine we would be where we are today with virtual reality and and uh but your your the the film was also like a warning against the dangers of technology right the, the <laughs> movie's also a warning about the dangers of technology and, and some of that has come true too well you know you're you're absolutely right and uh and i didn't even realize that at the time but that how i mean we can um look at uh just the way tweeting and 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 uh, all the social media can turn against somebody uh that would be like the the all the phones ringing as job would say you'll Mm -hmm. know when i'm inside the mainframe when if i remember correctly he says when all the phones of the world ring at the same time um and when you know and i don't want to necessarily go down a rabbit hole here but it is something that that uh, I know people are addressing and and, and should never be forgotten. But that when that that concept of, for example, in The Lawnmower Man, when the character Job says, you'll know when I'm inside the mainframe, when all the phones in the world ring at the same time. And and he he says that uh, representing the dark side. Sure. You know, that comes from that 
that character who's, who, who has evolved into this, this dark thing. And I would imagine when someone, especially these, when children in high school, it's hard enough when we were there, yeah. but to, to, to be bullied over the internet like that, I would imagine what they're going through is as powerful and as devastating as all the phones of the world ringing at the same time, because in their little world, it's, it's falling apart and being shattered. Um, um, and it's relative, isn't it? Because I mean, I hear more and more stories of people dropping out of school or leaving school or doing even something even more tragic. Sure. And, um, so yes, in answer to your question, Jonathan, uh, there were warnings in that film that I, I couldn't have even fathomed at the time. And, um, I'm not saying that every film has to have a great message uh, <laughs> because we've already covered that. I mean, where's the message in Maneater? Hey, pop a beer, man. light up a joint, eat some popcorn, <laughs> kick back and yell at the screen and go, this is stupid. This is crazy. Why are they doing this? You wouldn't do this. But it's fun because it's, it's just right. like going to going to the amusement park and jumping on. Say, I'll get on that ride today or I'll get, I'll get on that one. You know, it's but not going to change your the life. First, it's give you you played the first you played the first cyber bully, I think we can say on record. And, and I think that's a credit to Stephen King and the concepts too, that, mm. that he's mm -hmm. writing about. He's as much a futurist as he is just writing about the human uh, mm -hmm. experience. Um, Garrett Frawley wants me to ask about the Marshall. I've never seen the Marshall. Oh my gosh. But yeah. uh, I don't know specifically what he wanted to ask. I will say though, uh, sorry, Garrett, but uh, Chris Kavinsky, who does our um, horror, uh, he does our action podcast, Bulletproof Action. He made me watch that sweeper car chase where you oh, are riding a motorcycle dock. and then you jump on the back of the police car. You're playing the cop, the, police, the bad guy got in the police car and he's on this endless dock. I mean, that dock has got to be as far as, as long as the 10. Freeway. That was the Redondo Pier. Going back <laughs> and forth times. Yeah, they kept yeah. running that car back over and over <laughs> yeah, again because that yes. thing keeps yes. going. Yeah. If you haven't done that, Geeks gave us Google the YouTube for the, the sweeper car chase and watch Jeff surf a motorcycle long before van damme did it in hard target and then he <laughs> jumps onto the back of this police car it's actually a i actually think it's a, actually a pretty great stunt sequence and actually a pretty good uh, action directing sequence and i'd never even heard of this movie and i think it's awesome oh you just saw it that's right you were saying i you, only you, watched that yeah. sequence oh my I gosh mean, yeah you're you're I, I i miss you playing leading men like that and having these these leading roles and i know you still get a chance to play it you had a great role in lost we still see the camera up front mm -hmm. and center with you but um i mean what do you take from something like that like you just want to act you i don't think like this one it doesn't matter if there's a day on set with uh man eater or if you're doing like a long role like white herb yeah i i i think um and with now, with so many more platforms with streaming, there's so many more uh, opportunities for younger filmmakers to, to jump in the game. And, uh, and also uh, 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 different, different subject matter. Um, and within these given, you know, genres, uh, the, even the genres are able to cross uh, now. Um, so... Yes, Jonathan, I just dig working and and uh, but I love the the process of, of, of creating a story, being part of it and really working with different people all over the world all the time. And now at this point, after all these years, it's almost uh, especially in the States, when I go from one project to the other, I'm almost on every project. There's someone I worked with 20, 25 <laughs> years ago or just last week. Through but you, um yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's so difficult for so many people to get into the industry, uh, first of all, and to to maintain that uh, it, it's a it's a blessing to to have a career this long. And uh, and I feel, as I said, I, I feel like uh, with what I've learned and what I've been doing, and the people I've worked with, I, I honestly feel like I'm just getting started. You know, I mean, I've come into a wonderfully comfortable place. In, in my life and my career, uh, uh, and I approach the work differently. I still give a thousand percent, whether it's a big or small film, uh, whether it's a, uh, 
uh, a supporting character, a lead character. But uh, I really enjoy working with new people and old people, you know, old friends. And But uh, working with a new group of people all the time, it's fascinating. It's really, I mean, it's, you know, and to get paid for it and, and to take care of, <laughs> take care of your loved ones and go on That's some nice adventures. And, and some you get paid, some you don't, you know. I mean, I'm sure Hawaii was rough. I'm sure Hawaii was rough for that day you were on set. I'm sure. Well, it was, I got to tell you. <laughs> But it was beautiful. It was great, and and um, and, uh, and I am excited about how many more platforms there are with streaming. And one might say, well, it's, it's flooding the market. Uh, but hey, you know, the one who says it's flooding the market is is always the one who's employed. Yeah, <laughs> it's the one who's trying to get a movie done or trying to get their first movie done, who uh, is finding that that uh, because we have streaming and there is a need for for more and more product that we have there's so many talented people out there and giving them uh, a, a more opportunity. And I think also, Jonathan, if I may, that yeah. with so many more, um, uh, so much more product being presented, it's allowing not only young actors to get into the industry, it's allowing the older actors to work longer. You sure. know, and, and, uh, and work in much more uh, in many more genres, and it's fun to discover, you know, movies like Sweeper and this stuff. And I'm like, oh my god, like there's yeah, so much yeah. content. Like you said, you've done so many. Um, Nick Spanis wants to know, like, do you ever get together with Don Johnson, pause, soak it all in, and say, you know what, this is pretty nice. This little thing. Don and I here. are still friends. <laughs> well, Don Don Johnson and I are still friends, and, and we worked together a couple times since then mm -hmm. uh, because Don. Don produced The Marshall. That's maybe yeah. where that okay. question. And you first yeah. met him on Miami Vice? Is that the first time you We were... first met on Miami Vice when um when uh it was I think it's the the last episode of the first season when I blew I remember up his, it. Testarossa. I used to write yeah. the comic book for for Universal. I wrote the official comic book. I did some panels with uh, almost and those guys and I got to know Miami Vice really well and oh, I remember great. that episode. Great. Oh yeah. In that friendship, like, like, how is that? That's kind of oh, it's great. You know, I mean, we, we haven't seen each other in in a while, but we text all the time, you know, on holidays and this and that, or sometimes just hey, what's up? Um, but then we worked together. We did. I I went on and did an episode of Nash uh, Nash Bridges, but then we we both worked with Robert Rodriguez on on uh, Machete. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The machete movies. Yeah. Those, those are crazy yeah. films. <laughs> those movies are insane. Okay. Uh, the geeks gave us want to know this. What did you think of the ending of Lost? <laughs> well, I. It's a no win. Sure. Answer. Yeah. No, I think you're right on it's that a one. Fifty fifty. Um. I can say this. I had wished that the show would have gone on for years. It was a great gig, and you know, it was a great group of people. The the production, the directors, all the actors, the writers, the producers. It was, it was, it was that was a that was a beautiful job, and um, so I can give you my thoughts about the ending, but I would uh, rather say I just didn't want it to end. Sure. And I think yeah. a lot of fans agree with you too. I mean, that was a that was a game changer. And as you talk about yeah. the evolution of film and the way that we're going through the multiple streams, I remember Lost was the impetus, I believe, for the beginning of places like Hulu because ABC had that deal with iTunes, and mm -hmm. Lost was blowing up the charts with the download numbers because that was yeah. the water cooler yeah. show. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Lost, whether you love the ending or not, if it wasn't for Lost, you got to give it credit. It yeah. was the first real bingeable show because it was downloadable. You could buy it online and watch it. Speaking of Lost, the there's my yeah. helicopter. <laughs> well, listen, Jeff, think, thanks for coming on the show. Come by anytime. Um, enjoy your oh, helicopter flight. But yeah, come back anytime. We'll talk some of those genre movies. That, that Absolutely. That anytime, love. Jonathan. It was a pleasure. And, and hello to all your fans. Thank you. Of course. You uh, well, they're your fans, too. And the Geeks oh, gave us a reminder. You. That Man Eater comes out today uh, on in theaters and on demand digital. You want a, a fun rub roar like like ride? Go ahead and check out Man Eater. Jeff, thank you so much for uh, joining us. 
Have a safe flight. Thank you, Jonathan. All right, <laughs> Take brother. Care. I'll see you down the road. Bye. Cheers.